mga kapatid ay uh, uh, i-continue po natin ang uh, next part of our program. Ang uh, susunod po na part ng ating program ay uh, uh, ito po natin malalaman kung uh, uh, ano po yung uh, uh, role huh? role and opportunity of civil society organizations in Pangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Ang uh, makakapagbigay po nito sa atin, uh, alhamdulillah, at uh, kahit uh, medyo rush po yung pag-inform natin sa kanya ay hindi siya nag-decline. Uh, walang iba po kundi ang uh, mismo po presidente ng uh, Development Academy o Bangsamoro ng uh, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region ng City of Now. At the same time po ay uh, yung organisasyon niya na siya po yung presidente itong uh, Association of uh, Bangsamoro Advocates Incorporated, siya din po ng presidente. Ang nasabi ko po sa inyo ay uh, walang iba po kundi si uh, Dr. Norodin D. Salam ang ating uh, uh, makakapagbigay sa atin ng the role and opportunity of civil society in Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. Dr. Norodin, uh, kung nasa linya po kayo, nasa inyo na po ang uh, oras. Assalamualaikum. Uh... President uh, Brother Hasim. Waalaikum salam dog. Alhamdulillah welcome. Ah, uh, sila simulan ko na. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asrafil mursalin. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajmain. Amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh sa ating mga kapatid na Uh, nakikinig na nanonood sa ngayong uh, programa na orientation sa mga new members na magiging membro ng uh, League of uh, Bangsamoro uh, Organizations. Uh, una, ating pasalamatan ng Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala sa binigay na oportunidad sa ating magkita kahit uh, dito sa ating sa Kutabato ay uh, no movement ay na gawa pa rin natin na mag, mag uh, maglunsad ng orientation para sa ating mga partners at uh, kasama sa organisasyon. Um, ang inulingkod ay uh, kasalukuyang uh, uh, kasali sa pagbigay uh, ng uh, capacity development ng Bangsamoro especially sa especially to the uh, newly hired uh, uh, barm employees uh, that will uh, uh, work in the present government of the day, uh, bureaucracy of the Bangsamoro. Uh, gaya ng mga nasabi na sa nauna na uh, we are now in transition stage of government and we want to ensure the delivery of public service and uh, our expectation of the people when it comes to uh, building a uh, peaceful and uh, uh, bureaucracy that can address the concerns of different stakeholders. Because of that, I'd like to share with you uh, five uh, uh, points and uh, that will uh, considered as a role of the civil society. Uh, speaking of civil society organization, they maintain the... Uh, uh, before I proceed, I'd like to ask courtesy to the leaders of the LBO, especially to the chairman of the board, Engineer uh, Atagan, and the president of the LBO, uh, Brother Hasim Mantikayan, and the rest of the head of organizations, including the uh, soon-to-be member of uh, Ligo Bangsamoro organization. You know, in other country, they treat uh, they treated a CSO a very, uh, very uh, you know, uh, 
special body that will become a partner of their government. And MP Drew Kernan also uh, is uh, listening. Uh, Assalamualaikum to you, Doc. Huh? Happy watching. Um, in like in Indonesia, in Aceh, and even in Malaysia, they have a very strong partnership with civil society organizations. For the reason that civil society organizations, one is it is the major stakeholder of the government. Why? Why it is major stakeholder? But the nature of a uh, stakeholder, being stakeholder as a CSO, is different from ordinary stakeholders like the people, the followers, the constituents. Because the CSO, the non-government organizations, are considered a partner in developmental uh, undertakings. Nagiging bahagi siya ng paggaroon ng maganda, matatag na pamamalakad ng gobyerno. First and foremost, we know that CSO is building or they maintain neutrality or non-partisan status. They are non-partisan status. Whatever they state in their position papers are not connected or not uh, involving the government of the day, nor any government. So civil society maintains a neutral stand. Maintain a neutral stand that anything that uh, they want to pronounce, it is within their organizations and it is not a message of the government. Take note that uh, principle. As a being a stakeholder, they are uh, they are partner in community development process. So I like to share with you. Gusto kung magbahagi sa inyo ng mga uh, nagiging papel ng CSO sa paggaroon ng gobyerno ng uh, epektibo na makapagbigay ng delivery or pagbibigay ng serbisyo sa lahat ng bangso mo. Una, ang CSO is the one that is given also the role to ensure effective feedbacking. So meaning, CSO can give uh, their feedback and observation being a non-partisan organization, they can give feedback or even conduct research or even conduct uh, uh, any uh, monitoring processes because their personality is not uh, organic in the government of the day. They are outside of the government. They can able to see everything happens around the government, even, even outside. So meron siyang role, papel na ginagampanan, na tutulong sa gobyerno na makita kung ano ang mga kahinaan at ano ang mga shortcomings na nasa ground. Especially, uh, speaking of LBO, they reach as far as uh, the remote communities in, the, in, in BAR, na naabot niya yung mga malalayong lugar sapagkat sa dami ng organisasyong membro ay nagkaroon sila ng napaka-lawak na sako in terms of uh, monitoring and evaluation and feedbacking. So because of that, we heard also that uh, in the midterm review of ARM, there, there was a, an NGO, civil society, commissioned to conduct uh, a research research on the midterm uh, assessment of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. So that is the uh, very clear example of the role of CSO. So maybe LBO in the future, uh, in, in the near future, they can play the role uh, to help the government monitor uh, what is, uh, how things have gone 
and uh, saan na tayo sa pagpapatakbo bilang uh, pinapakinggang uh, grupo sapagkat uh, sa assessment kasi hindi pwedeng mag-assess nung nasa loob. So we want to assess, uh, commission to assess any group that is outside of the bureaucracy. Kaya itong pinaka isang role ng uh, organization or civil society organizations. Uh, same in uh, Indonesia, they have uh, very strong partners with uh, partnership with uh, civil society organizations. Pangalawang punto is its participation in building and uh, ensuring transparency. Why? Participation in ensuring the effective transparency of the government. Uh, the most concrete example of this is uh, a CSO can be a representative of the stakeholders in the community. They sit in bidding process, in bidding, in uh, bids and awards uh, committee, one NGO as a user or a participant in a member of the screening. And some other role are member of the screening committee of the recruitment process of, uh, uh, in, the, in the government. They can sit as a member of the, member of the recruitment process or even in uh, general planning of a particular ministry, they can sit as a representative to really ensure the participation of stakeholders representing the civil society organization. So they have the vital role, especially in selecting um, in the criteria, uh, establishment of the criteria of selection of uh, uh, awards, the awards committee, they will sit in as a member of the steering committee of the awards and any awards that uh, tantamount to the development process of the, of the, of the bureaucracy. Uh, one example of this is when MILT award, uh, launched the awards of uh, uh, Salamat Hashim Excellent Leadership Award, one NGO sat uh, just to uh, show the participation. And I know that N that NGO is also a member of the civil society organization or the LB. So ensuring transparency. So the more ideal process here is maybe in the near future, if this will be realized, the strong partnership of BARM and the CSO, maybe the CSO could initiate that each CSO this is not the recommendation, but it is actually the manifestation of how a CSO participate. Same with other government governance in Mindanao. One CSO is responsible, even Sangguniang Bayan, Sangguniang Panglunsod, a CSO or an government organization is part of the process as a member of the, the uh, committee or in the in the committee or in the in the uh, delivery process. So therefore, uh, a representative, for example, in different agencies, um, there must be one NGO to really observe, uh, just to organize, you know, the, the activity. My NGO could uh, select a ministry that, uh, or a department that uh, they can uh, monitor and help out to the minister uh, as feedback. But this has to be agreed by the, the government of the day. If that will be materialized, that will be the uh, implementation mechanism. So soon, inshallah, we hope and pray that uh, this will be realized in pattern with other uh, government uh, outside of Philippines, you know. So the third is involvement in community service. Uh, NGO, um, CSO can help in the community service process, the delivery of the community, you know, because the, the NGOs are uh, they have a very strong connection with the community. And even, even the national government of the Philippines, uh, you will see that some implementation of their services are coursed through non-government organizations. Because there are times that uh, a funding donor, for example, if an, if an international donor agency will intervene in the development process of BARM, so BARM will look for 
uh, because it is a requirement, for example, that these international donors will look for a, a trusted non-government organization or credible. When I say credible, they have a legal personality, they have a good track record, and as they will look upon it in order to implement a public service that is also compatible with their mandate. For example, uh, water and sanitation, uh, food security, and other so on and so forth. So this is actually the most valuable thing that uh, a government could engage with CSO because there are requirements that the government today should look one and government organization to become partner in, <clears throat> in the implementation of the public service delivery. We are now, uh, in, in the previous government, uh, we encountered an imbalanced delivery of public service and that of the output of the public service. Ang halimbawa nito ay, uh, sa mga nangunang mga, wala tayong sinasabi kung anong gobyerno, pero sa karanasan ng pagdideliver, minsan ay nagkakaroon tayo ng imbalanced service delivery. Bakit? Dahil ang na-observe natin for the previous years, kahit hindi dito sa BARM, sa ARM, hindi, kung sa iba pang mga ano, hindi natin sinasabi kung anong mga government of the day on, but this actually one of the difficulties na nangyayari na minsan imbalance sabagat maraming nagagasto, maraming nagagasto kaysa sa naipapaabot. No? So this is because of the factors of transportation, uh, transfer station facilities, uh, manpower element, and uh, but but today, because we open this opportunity, uh, the linkaging and other partnership in the community, NGO could help identify and help out in the delivery process. Depend is agreement ang mayayare. Ang nayayare mas maraming nagagasto sa uh, paghahatid ng produkto kaysa sa na yehahatid na produkto. So kung kung titingnan natin, dapat mas marami ang na yehahatid or uh, nagakaroon ng uh, impact don sa paghahatid kaysa sa nagagasto. Sa oh, it is actually actually very evident na uh, ang evident dito is uh, kung malayo ang lugar ay simply marami kang magagasto. But because of this, uh, with close coordination with local government units. Um, si BARM ay nag-establish siya ng close monitoring system and even yung command system na maganda. Not necessarily to bring a huge uh, rise in province, but they have to really maximize the effort of every LGU to deliver the service instantly. Hindi na yun aabot pa ng ilang araw. So that's actually uh, one of the role of CSO is uh, to help in the public service delivery uh, especially in times of crisis and emergencies. And we, uh, some of uh, the members of the NGOs here are, uh, CSO here are also partners in the previous uh, 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 war in Mindanao, especially in all out war, they play a vital role in the public service delivery because they can move quickly. They can move uh, uh, as far as, as they want because they have an access to the community. Okay, that's public service. And uh, in, co in community service as well, uh, they can uh, maintain the volunteerism. They can maintain in the volunteerism. And even some NGOs are uh, selecting uh, the qualified employees that can, they can recommend. And some NGOs are giving some recommendations, meaning an applicant of the government of the day, for example, is a competitive position in the government they really seek an endorsement from civil society organization. And from that, if the screening committee could see the uh, recommendation from the civil society organization, that would add to the criteria, that would add to the uh, screening uh, requirement that uh, they have an uh, advantage in terms of uh, uh, occupying the post because of the endorsement of the CSO. So meaning, uh, the endorsement of CSOs is also very important as the government could see that the person or organization who really maintains, nami-maintain niya yung qualification dahil sa pag endorse na isang civil society uh, organization. Ngayon, 
dito sa gover- government natin, nakikita natin, alam kong kahit na hindi pa liwanag, ay malinaw na malinaw ang papel ng CSO. Sapagkat dahil lang sa in times of crisis, nasa pandemic, hindi na natin babanggitin pa kung anong ginawa ng LBO, di ba? Kasi I'm not the right person to explain this, maybe the president or the chairman of the board. Pero kailangan talaga, we should, we should clear the parameters or maybe this is actually the, the future undertakings or the future initiative na maybe uh, given your truly can also uh, bring it to the uh, government of the day on the, the clear path of partnership between the CSO and the government of the day uh, establishing and implementing rules and regulations and mechanism process dahil napakahalaga ang kanilang papel na ginagampanan. Ngunit sa kasalukuyan, dahil we are in transition, hindi muna natin pwede pang magawa ito sa nakalipas, hindi natin nagawa. We did not materialize it because of the transition stage na marami pang inaayos sa loob ng bar at hindi pa natin napapriority. Pero dahil sa uh, napakarami na ang uh, engage natin sa bureaucracy, sa delivery of public service, eh, baka ngayon, uh, with the organization of the, the civil society, magkakaroon na siya ng clear and uh, uh, determined uh, direction of the partnership. Huh? Kasi ang mayayari niyan, magkakaroon siya ng memorandum of understanding between the government and the CSO. Kaya ilalatag loon kung anong mga role niya nagagampanan maging sa loob at labas ng gobyerno. Sabagat, yan ang uh, isa sa mga ano niya, mandate niya is uh, being a stakeholders, uh, link, linking to stakeholders, nararapat na uh, mapagtibay ang partnership. Sabagat, uh, ito nakikita yung uh, magandang feedback at saka monitoring system na uh, maaring uh, babaguhin. Sabagat, ang gobyerno ay hindi siya perfect. At uh, they need an entity that could give them a valid and a positive feedback uh, based from uh, a clear process. Based from a clear process. Well, I'm saying clear process, yung proseso na dadaan sa, uh, dadaan sa scientific process. Yung uh, monitoring system or evaluation system nadaraan sa uh, scientific process. Hindi lang yung observation only or uh, not only the observation uh, mechanism but also uh, even in FB, uh, an FB could not be an official observation not unless that it will undergo uh, a scientific process. For example, if an NGO uh, or civil society organization observes some kind of uh, 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 shortcomings or lapses in the public service delivery. Uh, una, hindi siya uh, masyado official pag uh, uh, naibibigay lang sa, sa, sa Facebook ang ano, hindi masyado. But uh, it will undergo the scientific uh, process or proper protocol that a study or a monitoring process could be undertaken using a tool or scientific tools that can give a valid and concrete information based from the observation we made. So therefore, hindi ko na masyado patagalin sapagkat yun ang pinakapunto, apat na yun na sinabi ko. Una is, uh, ang principle natin, lima pa yan. Una is, belong to the stakeholders. Uh, CSO is uh, considered as one of the major stakeholders of uh, the government. At uh, sila is naging partner in development process. Uh, pangalawa is ensuring effective feedback uh, on monitoring process. Ang pangapa, pangatlo is participation in transparency mechanism. Transparency mechanism. Ayan ay yung mga pinaka good ng moral governance ang transparency mechanism. At uh, siguro doon ang mababalob ang role ni CSO sa pag-promote ng moral governance. Pangapa is uh, involved in community service volunteerism. Kasi nakikita doon ng lakas if the uh, public uh, sectors or the private sectors, and ang sabi nilang uh, public and private sector partnership, 
because um, uh, the impact of this partnership would gain some development uh, projects and uh, it, it, seek, uh, it, it provides uh, job opportunities, open for employment, if there is a public and private partnership. So CSO also can also develop a kind of partnership. Pag makikita natin ang daming volunteer, alimbawa tree planting, uh, cleanup drive na from CSO, that means ang gobyerno ay uh, kaaya-aya at uh, uh, may participatory. Meron siyang participatory. More than participatory. Then, uh, yung pang-apat, pang-lima is helping uh, deliver public service. No? Having a deliver. Sabi ko kanina, that CSO ay nagkakaroon siya ng access to remote areas and even they, they are uh, they have the area of jurisdiction kaya madali lamang sa kanila na magbibigay ng uh, service. So, dahil dyan, um, I will end my sharing on the role of CSO. Malaki ang role niya. Kung ako ang tatanungin, malaki ang role niya. It is, hindi lang gawagaw ang salita ito. Ngunit may mga, may mga practices from other countries and even in the Philippines, we see the involvement of civil society organization. We see the involvement of the civil society organization. But the involvement will run through a positive development. Kasi alam ko, meron na ring involvement ng mga non-governmental organization na hindi rin masyado supportive sa government. Na? So, ang, ang prinsipyo kasi, ang CSO is primarily, this is not uh, actually built just to support the government. No, it is not. But it is it built to support the, go the people living under the government of the day. Kasi magiging bias siya pag ang NGO, alimbawa, ay susuportan niya yung government Pero ang mandate ni CSO is support the needs of the constituents, building support to the needs of the constituents in partnership with the government. Kaya yung nakikita natin na nakikita natin ang nangyayari ngayon, na may mga CSO na they are uncontrolled that would tend to really uh, disrupt the operation of the government. Yung sa mga ibang mga experience. But I hope and pray, inshallah ta'ala, na magkakaroon ng strong partnership ang Bangsa Moro at Onos Region ni Muslim Mindanao at ang uh, civil society uh, organization. By that, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, sukran sa pakikinig sa aking sharing. Yan lang ang mga aking may share sa ngayong umaga. Uh, napakalaking uh, uh, karangalan ang maimbita uh, bilang membro ng LBO at bilang uh, membro din uh, ng government of the day na uh, nagpapalakad sa larangan ng uh, pagsasanay ng uh, department departmento na aking tinalalagyan ngayon. Ito ang ating kag itong kaibigan at uh, kapatid sa Islam si uh, Brother Norodin Salam naghatid ng uh, mabrok sa LBO at uh, napakagandang uh, activity ito ngayong umaga. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum. Thank uh -huh.